October 20th, 2010 has been designated World Statistics Day. This is a global celebration of statistics and in particular official statistics. This concerns the contributions to official statistics in 2010 in one such country, which according to The Economist magazine has previously boasted the best national statistics agency in the world. In July of 2010, the Secretary General of the United Nations, Ban Ki-moon, wrote the world leaders, including the Right Honorable Stephen Harper. Let us make this historic World Statistics Day a success by acknowledging and celebrating the role of statistics and the social and economic development of our societies and by dedicating further efforts and resources to strengthening national statistical capacity. What else happened in Canada in July of 2010? The cleanup from the G20 summit continued and the invoice arrived. The long form of the Canadian census was quietly executed. Just before Canada Day, the government announced that it would cancel the long form of the Canadian Census presently used by thousands of groups for economic and social planning. The long form questions continue to be essential for providing the information needed by governments, businesses, researchers and individual Canadians to shed light on issues of concern to all of us employment, education, training, transportation, housing, immigration, income support, pensions for seniors, transfer payments, Aboriginal issues, and many more. Honorable Maxime Bernier, PC, 2006. The stated reasons for the cancellation were privacy concerns and the threat of imprisonment. Perhaps the government had not noticed that they could alter any aspect of the census that they wished before millions were spent on planning for it. There was a remarkable reaction on the part of Canadians and more than 360 groups representing them. The longest serving chief statistician Ivan Falegi argued that this is a serious matter that should have led to the resignation of the chief statistician. The Statistical Society of Canada wrote Minister Clement suggesting this was clearly a mistake and that the government's logic was deeply flawed. Municipal governments, provincial governments, police forces, planners, statisticians, economists, native groups, language groups, religious groups, citizen petitions, professional societies, and scientific statistical societies from around the world recognized the flaw and asked the government to correct its mistake. A voluntary survey is simply not comparable to a mandatory census. No number of voluntary answers can accurately represent those who do not answer, especially if volunteering depends on the answer to the question. But in Ottawa today, ideology seems to be in the driving seat, and evidence-based reasoning moves to the back of the bus. And so, on this World Statistics Day, we are gathered here to bury the remains of the long form census. Our hearts are full of sadness at her sudden and untimely passing. The many next of kin were shocked at the cruel and ill-considered, senselessless act that led to her death. The census was by no means universally loved. But she provided an objective basis of fact for decision-making, planning, and benchmarking other surveys. If her questions were intrusive, it was the government of the day which approved them. If the punishments under the Statistics Act for non-response too severe, it was the government of the day responsible for amending the Act. The alleged intrusions did not include such questions as to your favorite breakfast cereal, the number of broken tiles in your bathroom. These and others were simply malicious rumors planted by her enemies. 
She was the source of reliable information to more than 360 groups and thousands of individuals, and we all mourn her loss. We entomb, on this world's statistics day, not only the long form of the census, but the tradition of the independence of official statistics. We consign to this grave also the letters and motions of statistical societies from around the world, the Statistical Society of Canada, the American Statistical Association, the Institute of Mathematical Statistics, the Biometric Society, the French Statistical Society. These letters acknowledged by form email more than two months late with the same misinformed mantra that accompanied the original pronouncement that larger sample sizes compensated for the bias and the real purpose of this change was to save the non-compliant from incarceration. We commit to the earth more than 16,000 names on petitions. Canadians politely requesting the reinstatement of the long form of the census. And international experts hoping that reason would eventually prevail over stubborn ideology. May their interests also rest in peace. We also lay to rest 110 million taxpayers' dollars that the biased Voluntary National Housing Survey will cost 30 million more than the long form census. This money might otherwise have been wasted on health care, education, or the elderly. And it's a reasonable price for a more expensive but less reliable version of the same data. Surely, it is worth spending an additional $10 million apiece to satisfy the three citizens who actually complained to the Privacy Commissioner about the long-form census. And so, on this day, October the 20th, 2010, we assure the Secretary General of the United Nations, Ban Ki-moon, and all the world leaders that we, in Canada, celebrate World Statistics Day as does no other nation. May the long form and the independence and freedom in Canada of official statistics rest in peace. Or may the census and the political independence of official statistics one day rise again.